Is there something already connected to it? Not along the secondary connection. We could just probe it again. We're too close to the interstate. That's what the problem is. Getting the wives off the internet. <laughs> on was the server side. Yeah, and then this is the client side. So it basically just says, mount the server with cluster FS, and my distributed in the directory, file my distributed in the directory slash the mint team. So you're hitting an actual server and yeah. an actual mount. You're not calling some kind of virtual server. So it's it's calling a particular server. Yeah, and, right. and so you could do you could do rel one, rel two, rel three, four, any any of the nodes in the cluster. And the difference between this and NFS is that you know the NFS server needs to be up all at the same time, right, for the whole time that you're using the mount point. Whereas with this, this is only at mount time. So if rel one goes away it only uses rel1 to grab the metadata info at mount time. So if rel1 goes away, the other nodes are still available and you can still use the file system. But you wouldn't need to do anything with the mount. It would just bog down for a second and then realize to go to the other server. Right, right. And, and the other part too is notice that she specified the volume name and not the directory of the brick. Not the volume name. All right. 
All right, so let me get this straight. You got four, four or five servers up there. Each one has a brick inside of this. Now, is there something specific about rel one over the other one? Is it like the, the mother superior yeah. or the other ones? Though? No, no, no. So that's a good point. No, so, it's not like it's not the mother superior of all the servers. It's just the one we picked to run yes. our commands on. Like, when you said if rel one went down, you wouldn't. Still be okay. Yeah. Yes. Still be there is no. Yeah. So the big, the big difference. Um, so if you look at uh, like GFS or other cluster file systems. Right. Well, GFS isn't a good example, but a lot of a lot of distributed file systems or cluster file systems have oh, a centralized okay. metadata server. Right. Which or like HDFS <coughs> is another one where it has to be up, and if that's down, it's the traffic cop that says right. how everything goes. Where the cool thing with the cluster is, you know, the logo for the cluster for cluster is is an ant. Um, and, and the thought behind that is that ants don't really have a main leader. It's like they all know what to do. They all grab whatever and, and they, they march along. You step on an ant and you squish it. The other ones keep on moving along. Okay, so they all, they all work independently and, and, and they're very resilient. And but if REL1 goes down, don't you lose not only don't you lose a fourth of your data? Uh, in the distributed volume, yes. But, but, if right? you, but, but if you were in a replicated volume, no, this is distributed. Well, this, yeah, this is distributed. But if you were in a replicated volume, you would just lose that particular copy of your data. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. If real one was down, though, you'd have to do the mount with real two, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just for the mount. mount time. Just for the mount. Yep. And then it identifies the other computers and goes on. So I, I may have missed this one. I want to have Aaron G. Is this a demo of the uh, Geo cluster? Nope. No, this is this is straight up. Uh, this is we're not doing geo replication and all that. We'll say if Lauren wants to talk next month. We'll <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's the geo replication is we we could have added it, but just for time reasons we we didn't do it. And and you could think of the geo replication as just a fancy option. Okay. Okay. Hurry on. Doing great. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to change the directory to flash MNT so we can create some files and see how the distributed volume really works. So now we're in the directory slash mnt and I'm going to run a touch command to create some files. <coughs> and so it's basically saying, hey, let's create these files. They're going to be called A through Z. And then if you do an ls, you can see all of our files are there. And then if we do an ls to slash my data, you're on real score. I know. No, you got to tell them. Oh, um, back to the servers. <laughs> so here we're looking under the hood at each of the four servers to see how the data is distributed. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you only see part of those files then. Like. See? Yeah. So you instead of A through Z, REL yeah. 4 only has D, H, S, B, and Z. Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> so but similar to striking. REL 3 has yeah. all these other things. What is the sign you're It's the No, no, it's it's the elastic hash algorithm. The way the way it works. And and it there's a heuristic that'll do it. And over and, and you'll notice it, you notice how Lauren is doing this. It's not a perfect distribution of all the files. It's not like a round robin. Right. Right. And and right. so um, yeah, eight on one server and four on yeah, the other. Yeah, and the thought is that over time it, it will ultimately balance itself out. Um, and then if things actually do get lopsided, you can actually run a command to rebalance it. Oh. Sort of almost like doing like a scan disk or a, or a d defrag, you know. It's a probabilistic distribution. Yeah. It's kind of like if you flip a coin, you expect it to be half and half, but, you know, in real life you might get, you know, some extra 56 on one side and yes. 44 on the other. So, so here, so you, got, you saw that on 1, 2, 3, and 4 you saw all the pieces, but from the client side, it it all looks glued together, and the client doesn't need to worry about oh, I got to go to rel one to get file A. Yeah, the client is just like oh, there's my file. It doesn't see like oh, file A on file A is on rel one. It just sees there's a file. So each server keeps a, uh, a kind of directory structure of all the <coughs> other file servers so that you know which file. No, and this is the wild thing about the that it, the elastic hash algorithm is that the client will do a hash 
and it it knows that it's on server four. Okay. It doesn't ask server one, hey, are you the, you know uh -huh. what what it's the the, the client will will do a hash, and it knows to go to file to four. Which hash is it using? Uh, I, I I know it, or I mean I I, I know that it exists. It's some weird goofball hash. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's not like SHA one or something common. It's it's like a really weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's you know. like some custom one. I can't remember the name of the professor, but Professor Blah 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 created Elastic Hash. I know him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not so, important at all. So this is unique to the Nix operating systems, right? It's that work on Windows. Well, yeah, it, it, yeah. So the way it works is it. Um, it's developed on Linux, you know, and but people have ported it to BSD and, and the other variants, and you can get clients for them as well from the community. And if you want to do, if you want to mount, uh, we don't have a native mount or a, a native client for Windows. That is something we get asked a lot. But um, but what you can do is any of these nodes can any of the four servers that you saw can act as an NFS server or as a Samba server. And then what you do is you mount that that server, and then you could you know through Samba access that. But you still have a, a the the difference though is that the native client can talk to any of any of the peers in the cluster, whereas if a Windows box has to always talk to that same uh, that same client all the time because it's it's a named host. Same thing with NFS. That's their problem. No. <laughs> My recollection it uses the Fuse file system interface though. Yes. Correct. Still. And I guess there are two questions, and if you're going to cover it later, that's fine. But one is, you know, are, are we going to see a native version of Bluster built into the kernel? And I understand that there's a Fuse interface on Windows, so somebody must be working on that as well. Yeah. So, and I, you know, and, and probably that's where it would come from. Uh, but as from what I've seen, is that people like Fuse because by having it in user space, it, you know, that'll, that allows it to be decoupled from the kernel, and, and, and so that they like to have that separation. Okay, Lauren, what's, okay. Which, what do you want to do next? Um, I have to, so now I'm going to change the directory out of slash and then unmount it, so that way it's unlocked enough time for a couple more volumes. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. My spelling's always been notorious. So now that it's mounted, we can go back and to row one and and create a new replicate for me. Again, all of our files are there. But then if we do an 
LS Predator 1 on here. All the files are there. Again, A through Z. <coughs> so, did you just create a, another cluster of replicated volumes? And yeah, so now she has, uh, so now the cluster has two volumes. One is distributed, one is replicated. Yeah, and now that we've created our cluster, we don't have to recreate it every single time we create a new volume. <coughs> so. I have a question. For each of the, like my data and my data one, are you just using directories or do you have to use a new partition? Nope, there's nope. a directory. Yeah, that's one of the things with that it's that makes cluster so easy is it you don't need to do a logical volume or a partition or anything. It's just it? a directory. What's that? How big is it? How big is what? How big is your drive? Oh, do do uh, it could be a, yeah, go ahead do a, a df uh, actually on the client do a, a df dash h. Size the yeah, so right now it's we're just doing this on little bitty VMs where each VM has a four gigabyte disk. And and so you see here that, that my replicated. So you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so you can see, so our size of my replicated is three gigabytes, e sorry, about four. Even though it's replicated across four different four gigabyte servers, it's still only one gigabyte because rel two, three, and four are all just essentially a copy of rel one in terms of volume. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, you're, you're replicating a full rate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When you did a single one, was it? When yeah, when so sixteen then? Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's defined by the file system or volume of what the directory was in on each of those volumes. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> For different sizes, does it add them all up? Yeah. yeah so with um, so with replicated, you don't want to do that, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you're you're going to end up waste having wasted stuff. space. <laughs> Distributed, you can do it, but things are going to get lopsided after a while. You know, so then you're going to have a hot spot on a particular server. So typically, you know, in in the enterprise, you you def, you know you want to strive for consistency, right? You want to have similar hardware, similar configuration. So if something fails. You could rip it out, slap a, uh, an identical thing in. And it so now, if I change the directory out of slash mnt into 